What's going on guys, this is Kaiju Poo, and today we will be taking a look at the Haya Basic Exquisite Godzilla King of the Monsters Rodan. Now I know this video has taken forever for me to get to. Uh, life got a little busy uh, with work and family and uh, haven't had the, a good amount of time to actually sit down and review anything. A lot of the reviews that you see were all pre-recorded and uh, done in haste so uh, without further ado welcome um, this review has been long awaited and I'm glad to finally get it to you guys but uh, yeah let's go ahead and get into it so before we get into the actual review of the figure I always like to take a look at the packaging now sometimes uh, figures come with really dope packaging uh, whether it's like unique artwork or the display piece to it, like it has some type of unique way of uh, displaying the figure. Uh, sometimes we get cool packages like that, but Haya keeps it pretty simple. Uh, as you can see, this is sort of similar to the Godzilla vs. Kong uh, figures packaging. It's fairly simple. It uh, has like poster imaging in the back. You have a little uh, figure pictures here, here, and here. Uh, with the included flight stand uh, and then it, it tells you you know where this figure or monster or whatever you want to go with came from obviously this one came from Godzilla King of the Monsters little higher logo there in the bottom right corner and then just some figure information um, there uh, on the sides we got the same poster picture uh, pictured here more logo and in the rear, we got the figure and flight stand, something in Chinese, which unfortunately I do not speak, and some uh, Haya Toys information here. And on the other side, oops, we have the same picture with the same logo. So, yeah, nothing too crazy with the packaging, though um, Though there isn't, I still like to give you guys a, a good initial look at what this figure comes with. So uh, here we have it. We have Rodan. Um, there is some assembling outside of the package, uh, which is, does not deal with the figure at all. It's actually with this base here. Um, just slight assembly. It's just essentially connecting uh, this flight holder piece here to the actual flight uh, stand. So yeah, uh, in this case, I took out this extra piece. One thing I will say, uh, Haya flight stands are not the strongest or sturdiest flight stands I've ever had. Uh, Bandai definitely beats them there with uh, when it comes to flight stands. Uh, I will say like these pieces here are very weak so just messing with them a little bit may loosen and cause this figure to fall out of the flight stand. But uh, luckily uh, from my initial initial feel of the figure, um, the figure doesn't have any you know concerns when it comes to like pieces right this is mostly of a rubberish plastic uh, very flexible very durable um, paint and everything initially looks great but uh, let's go ahead and let's dive into this figure all right moving into articulation how I like to do things I like to start from the top to the bottom so first thing is first is we will remove him from his flight stand and we'll take a look at the head articulation so before I get in to it I want you guys to get a good look at the detailing if it will focus uh, phone's having trouble focusing but I just want to say again the detailing on this figure is very nice uh, there's small intricate detailing all throughout the head mold uh, I would say it's a lot more defined than the actual um, SH Monster Watch figure itself which I will compare here in a bit but for now let's go ahead and get into the articulation so the head or the jaw, I should say, is on a hinge joint, allowing it to open uh, to reveal the tongue, which has some nice detailing there. It's not a unrealistic lightish pink. It actually has like some uh, nice color differentiation. It doesn't look too saturated or anything like that. It's very quite nice, if uh, I do say so myself. But yeah, so yes, you have a jaw on a hinge joint that allows for it to open and close. Uh, it's not too crazy wide. Um, range of motion for the, the mouth but it, it's enough to, to make do so moving on from there the head is on a um, a ball joint it's kind of hard to keep it separated because the the way that this figure sets up it's sectioned and each section overlaps allowing it or causing uh, any movement in the head to affect the neck but yes there is a ball joint in the head that allows for it to go on 360 degrees uh, and to look down about that far and look up 
that far. So you're able to switch from pose to pose. Obviously you have his flight pose here. If I want to go into his more as attacking pose where he's like looking towards or at someone like he was at Ghidorah, you can kind of uh, have it flipped to there. But that also comes with the articulation of the waist, which we'll get into uh, later on. But yeah, at the base of the neck, same thing. Kind of all flows together, like I said, because it's like a segmented uh, neck. So at 360 degrees, not really too much um, up and down motion aside from what I showed you. Then we got that little side to side tilt that allows him to like look and angle uh, his head to make him uh, to put him in various poses. You know, that little side pose looking at the um, aircraft next to him that are shooting at him or to look down, stuff like that. A lot of posability options here. Um, so yeah, that's really dope. But now moving on down to the arms. Um, arms are on a ball joint, which allow 360 degree turn, which is really nice. Um, you can bring them up this far and down that far. Um, it, mo most of the posability is relied upon uh, in the arm, I would say, on the, the wire, um, wired wings so so yeah so this is a, all you really get from uh for posability here you there's not really a butterfly joint there too much there's not really too much of a wide shoulder spread but uh aside from that you have the wire um wire wings which is really dope this this causes for allows for more organic posing as such so you're, you're able to get some really nice movement really nice poses here uh, to mimic and recreate some of the iconic scenes from the movie. So as you can see here, it uh, looks like he's like swooping in, whatnot. Uh, you can also bring him down to have him like kind of stand on his wings, which I'll show you guys here. So, boom. Let's see if I can move him in the frame. So it allows for him to uh, mimic as if he's like crawling for him. He's like first awakened, right? He, his wings aren't spread. He's coming out of the volcano. Uh, this is really cool. I, I thought this is... One of the coolest benefits of having a wire, uh, wired wings. Uh, the only issue I will have probably in the future is that it may start to wear here, but I'm assuming these little holes or pinholes made in throughout the wings, as you can see, will allow for the uh, posability and the, um, the wire inside to last longer. So here's hoping to that being the case. Uh, all in all, super dope to have that um, a part of the figure. Uh, moving on now to the waist. The waist is, or I guess, midsection, I'd say. The, the waist midsection doesn't really have a waist. Um, so so it's kind of like his chest, so I'd say his torso. His torso can turn. Uh, can't go on, it probably could go 360 degrees, but I'm not going to push the limits of this. This is my only one. And um, uh, they are not expensive, but they are um, kind of hard to come by nowadays. I know they are re-releasing, so let's hope um, they have mass production. But... Until I can confirm that, I'm going to go ahead and just roll with this. So, you got slight turns here. Not too bad. You can pivot down or hinge down and hinge back this far. Again, allowing for that uh, flight pose. And then lean forward about that far uh, to help support that attack type of posing. So, not too bad. Kind of angle them a little bit. Allow for that little spin move uh, that he does in the movie. Where he starts knocking out the jets and, and the um, whatever they are, the jets, helicopters, the ospreys, whatever's attacking them. That's from to do that little spin move that we see in the movie. Really cool. Um, now moving down to the legs. Legs are very nicely. Um, they're not tight. They're not like super finicky. You're not worried about moving them. Um, they're on a ball joint, which will allow for 360 degrees, as you can see there. Uh, it has a decent spread, uh, not too much of one. Can't really do much with that, actually. Uh, so what I kind of expected. But yeah, uh, moving down to kind of like the uh, the thigh area, you got some minimal movement allowing for it to uh, raise his, uh, his uh, foot up and bring his foot down. Moving down to like the ankle-ish area, uh, same thing there. It's a ball joint mixed with like a hinge joint. Uh, that's what these two pieces are here, allowing for some decent movement, as you can see there. Nothing too crazy, but uh, definitely definitely nice. Uh, then we are moving down to the tail. Tail has some nice uh, posability, 360 degree turn. You can lift it up, down, side to side, all that good stuff. Um, 
yeah, uh, nothing nothing really much to this figure aside from just it being a, a piece to have, I would say. Um, taking a look at the detail closely, there's a lot of things that we could take away from this that uh, this figure has that the SH Monster Art figure lacked. But overall, dope figure, I would say. Uh, definitely love the look. It looks way more menacing than I would say the uh, SH Monster Art, which we will get into here in a second. But yeah, overall, great sculpt, great uh, paint application, and decently uh, done articulation. Really love the fact that they added the wire wings. Um, helps with posability and helps with trying to take some dope photos. So yeah. Taking a look at both of the Haya and SH Monster Art Rodan, uh, we can obviously see there are some very, very subtle and very, very big differences. Obviously, the biggest difference, in my opinion, is the color selection that each figure company used. So Bandai went with a, uh, I can't really describe it. It's like a brownish, pinkish, probably mixture with a black splash on it uh, from what I'm seeing. Uh, the detailing in, its, in this figure is absolutely beautiful. But unfortunately, it's, uh, its design and overall sculpt does not make up for the issues that I do have with the SH Monster Arts. Now, uh, on the SH Monster Arts, or at least on my version of the SH Monster Arts Rodan, uh, this foot is very easily, like, it comes off. It just it might as well just be without the figure for how easily it comes off. Now, I was, I was, you know, reviewing this figure, the Haya. I have no issues with the foot. There's no really QA or QC problems um, with my Haya figure. As for the Rodan uh, from SH Monster Arts, there are a few issues that I have, as one of them being the figure's tail, foot, and other pieces of the figure fall apart fairly easily. Uh, for this figure, it being a two-pack with Rodan, or uh, Mothra, excuse me, uh, for it being about, I, would, I think it was about maybe 70, 75 for two. I can't exactly remember the price, but it wasn't a bad price for two. But um, the overall figure themselves, they're not meant for much more than maybe even display. But even then, as you can see, this this falls off without me even handling it. I mean, I handled it there in front of you guys, but still it was uh, very easily uh, taken apart. And uh, that's one thing I hate about this figure here is how fragile how excuse me how fragile this guy is uh, there's not many much articulation to him aside from uh what they kind of both share with the waist and um waist wings head legs and tail articulation they're all pretty similar in that i will say sh monster arts has a little bit more articulation in the neck allowing him to look down a little bit more but uh overall uh the head sculpt of the sh kind of lacks that little fear-stricken look that striking uh rodan look that we get in the uh the movie itself he kind of looks uh, like rodan yes but does he look accurate or 100 percent to the movie no not as as close as i would say um the high uh, the beak as has slight differences it's a little smoother here as uh, on the high it has a more of a defined tip and you can see the individual kind of like teeth or there's little harsh points on the, the beak itself, which uh, SH Monster Arts kind of completely forgot. It's mostly of like a smooth, straight-on beak. So, uh, look at him falling right there. So the sand itself pretty much sucks. I'm not even going to put him back on there because, in my opinion, this is the true winner. Uh, even with the, the, the crappy little flight stand it comes with, in my opinion, uh, it definitely withholds better than the Tamashi. Uh, I was actually thinking about displaying this with this, but seeing how it can't even hold the weight of a much smaller uh, figure in size. I mean, I'm going to just hold them up as is. Um, obviously, the Haya figure towers them a little bit. The SH Monster Art feels a little heavier. I think it's due to the plastic they used. But um, still, um, Haya being the bigger figure, it's still a little lighter. Um, and I truly enjoy messing with this one a lot more. Uh, I have very little QC issues with it aside from the eyes, and that's not even a QC issue. That's just the design they went with. Um, so if there's any improves to the higher figure, I would say maybe add um, more detailed eyes. I went ahead and did my own little detailing as I showed you guys earlier. But uh, yeah, overall, if I was to compare and choose one, I obviously would choose Haya. Haya has the better quality in uh, movement, uh, articulation, color, and overall sculpt. 
uh, compared to the uh, SH Monster Hunter Rodan. Now, I am not saying SH Monster Hunter Rodan is a terrible figure, right? It still does its justice as being a collector's piece, but and it comes to quality and uh, accuracy and overall sculpt, I will say Haya does take the cake for that for me. Um, Tamashi uh, Bandai makes wonderful Heisei um, uh, Godzilla figures, so I'm not going to take away all their um, all, all the respect and all their skill and, and whatnot from them. But I will say when it comes to the MonsterVerse, Haya is absolutely killing it. And um, with the recent review of the Skullcrawler, I am highly excited for whatever else is to come. Hopefully, uh, 2014 being my favorite freaking movie, um, I'm hoping they reveal something uh, soon for it. Uh, with the anniversary just passing, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see what we may get from Haya pertaining to Godzilla 2014, which is my personal favorite Godzilla movie. But yeah, overall, um, taking a look at this figure, I would say uh, for the price point at which this is and the quality at which this figure is, I 100% believe this is worth uh, every penny. So yeah, get out of here, uh, SH Monster Retro Dan. Oh God. Um, I will say this is the superior figure of the two. Um, if you have the chance, go ahead and pick this up. I want to thank uh, Haya Toys for sending me this figure to review for them. I have a couple more uh, figures from them that I'm, I plan to review. Uh, last one I reviewed from their line was the statue, the Burning Godzilla statue. I have Mothra, uh, which I'll also do a compare and contrast with with the SH Monster Art. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have some fun. I also got my Kong too, so definitely have some more reviews coming your way. Um, but yeah, that, that wraps up this video, guys. I just want to say thank you guys for all the support, love, and patience. Uh, it's been a little bit busy, but I do appreciate the patience that I get from you guys. So uh, from there, I just want to say thank you guys, love you guys, and you guys have a great day.